confined spaces you're in for The Escapist and now broadening out to big Hollywood blockbusters. So I wonder how challenging did you find this? It's, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a challenge, certainly in many ways. I mean, the confined spaces of The Escapist, interestingly, were predominantly location because when you're making an independent film, you can't afford to build sets. And, and actually that sometimes is a good thing because it lends an air of realism that, that otherwise you can't achieve. And um, with a film like this, it was always my intention to make this as real world as possible and, and, and believable as possible. So you want to be out on the street and, and, uh, and on location as much as you can. And, and um, because sometimes I think Hollywood has a tendency by, by the nature of how many people are involved in the making of these huge films is they take the films inside, they're, they're more studio based. And, mm. and that can sometimes be wonderful because it can give you a real freedom to move and, and explore but also it can be create a certain sense of artificiality. And, and I think um, we were always very, very aware of that and we wanted to do something different. And, and so that was definitely a challenge. And, and, uh, and I feel like with this film in particular, being, being an original origin story of, of this franchise, we wanted to make it believable. We wanted an audience to, to take it very seriously. Mm. Was it always going to be performance capture for you as well? It was never kind of a discussion to mix and match and have a guy in a suit and then see Jai the face? No, 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 it wasn't. I mean, uh, only because we're, real, we're dealing with real apes, real orangutans, real chimpanzees, real gorillas. So, um, so anatomically, we, we as actors uh, or humans would not fit into those suits. Maybe with a gorilla we would because they're bigger than us. But, um, but I think uh, we wanted the audience to believe in these, these characters. So we had the option of live apes that we didn't want to use um, and, uh, and then performance capture, which was a technology that was uh, not necessarily foolproof in terms of what we were going to pull off because it's a first, what we've done, to create humanoid flesh and blood creatures that essentially have a soul and to do that mm. using computer-generated imagery um, is, is really unusual. And, and certainly Avatar obviously achieved something phenomenal, but they were aliens and, and therefore there was a certain heightened reality to them. This, you know, you, you know what a chimpanzee looks like and, and how he acts. So uh, we had to get the audience to believe in them, and that's, that's, uh, that's a challenge. Mm. It's an amazing performance from Andy Serkis as well. Yeah. Uh, you just really invested in, in Caesar, basically. Yeah. So I'm wondering, do you think uh, or hope possibly that Fox might launch an Oscar campaign for Best Supporting Actor or Best <laughs> Actor for him? I hope so, yeah. I mean, I think, I think that's actually also, I mean, I forgot to say this, but I think it's, it's, it's when you have an actor playing these roles and that's the beauty of performance capture it's so very different from keyframe digital animation in that respect because you have at the heart of the performance a, a just a terrific actor guiding the you know he's the, he is the the colonel he's the one that you're following and echoing mm. in terms of the role i mean he plays caesar in the same way that john hurt played the elephant man you know beneath all of that makeup so um so i think the fact that he's he's being acknowledged for what he's he's achieved in this role is is a wonderful thing so yeah, I mean, of course, it'd be great. Mm. How did uh, Tom Felton feel as well about delivering that line? Um, it's funny, I, you know, we never talked about it. I don't, you'd have to ask him how aware, uh, how iconic that line was. I wanted to avoid making it too iconic for him because mm. I think then it would start to become something less in the moment and, and more about, you know, more referential to the, to the franchise itself. And that would have taken us out of the film. So I just focused on the fact that you have a chimpanzee holding onto your arm and, and yeah. uh, he's got a forceful grip. And so that, that line is coming from that moment. Yeah, I guess you have to tread quite carefully because, I mean, it's been parodied quite a lot. I mean, The Simpsons do tons of stuff with like the apes, yes. like chimpanzee to chimpanzee and stuff like that. So yeah. we, were you always kind of looking out to make sure you didn't maybe push it too far? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think there's always a tendency um, to sort of be a little ironic and a little nod to, to the audience. Or, and, and, and sometimes that can take you out of the, of the film and that's dangerous. You know, you, you want any reference, which is not necessarily a bad thing. There are some, some great moments, I, I think, in the film which, which do refer to the mythology and do so in such a way that place us within that mythology and, and, uh, and make us part of the group of, of films. But, um, but to do so in, in a... In a you know, in a, an unnecessary way or a gratuitous way, I think would be a mistake because we always wanted to make this story real. And so, uh, so yeah, those moments had to serve the story.